there's actually something very interesting about this device. In fact, not just one thing, but multiple things. This is the Xiaomi 15S Pro. And for the time being, it's a China exclusive. While I've managed to get my hands on it, although for a very brief period of time, it's given me an idea of what it's capable of and what it's trying to deliver. I'm actually pretty impressed by its design, with this one having a Kevlar back and an all-metal chassis. There's quite a bit of heft to it, which exudes a premium feel, which is something I like, and you're covered as far as durability is concerned as well. What makes the 15S Pro unique though is its user experience. Yes, it's got Android 15 with Xiaomi's HyperOS 2, which is decent, but more than that, you get Xiaomi's first ever processor in the X-Ring 01. This is a three nanometer chip, and I've done a full benchmark and speed test video on this compared to the A18 Pro and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite if you're interested. In a nutshell, it's impressive, but there's still room for improvement as you'll find out if you go watch that video. Another area where I think the 15S Pro can improve is with its display. So it's got a 6.73 inch Quad HD Plus panel, which mind you, is pretty good with subtle curves and a good multimedia experience. Audio quality is robust too, and if you're interested in a sample, here it is. What undersells the experience, especially for me though, is the display brightness, which is much lower than what you typically get on a flagship device and even for mid-range smartphones. Indoors, this is very noticeable and outdoors to some extent as well. And so that brings me on to the camera of the device. The 15S Pro packs a pretty strong Leica lens setup on the back and a pretty decent camera on the front as well. And let's cycle through a few pictures to get an idea of the device's capabilities, starting with zoom, so starting at 1x where the shutter speed is decent and so is the quality of the image. Moving to 2x, straight away we see a much warmer tone and at 5x there's yet another shift in color and even though quality is good, the device fails to maintain color consistency across its lenses. This is at 10x, which is a bit softer than I'd like to see, but at 30x it's fairly decent. There is an option also for 60x, which is quite washed out, and finally a full 120x if you really need it. Next, we'll take a look at the difference between the wide and the ultra-wide lens. To be fair, the wide lens again is pretty good, and switching to the ultra-wide lens, the image becomes much softer and also cooler compared to before. This is another sample moving from the regular lens to the ultra-wide with a similar story, although the ultra-wide picture in this case seems to lose out on dynamic range as well. Now let's take a look at rear portraits, where I don't really have any complaints. I've turned off all beauty enhancements and the results are good. At 2x you do get a slightly softer and warmer image, but still fairly usable. Lastly we've got selfies in quite a challenging scenario where again I'm not too disappointed. While that's the wide view, there's an option to crop in a bit and further to take portraits where edge detection could be better and is slightly inconsistent. So this is a look at 4K 30fps footage from the Xiaomi 15S Pro using the front facing camera during the day and I'm starting with 4K 30fps because this is where AI audio works. At 4K 60fps it doesn't seem to work and this is the regular sort of quality that you would expect to get with the front facing camera. I mean it's not too shabby, the dynamic range, especially in the background, at least from what I see on the viewfinder, does seem to be blown out so that might be a problem with the device but aside from that it seems fine, the stability also seems pretty okay and it adjusting to sunlight right in front of me it's supposedly doing a good job too. So not too shabby. Let's switch to 4K 60 FPS now and see the difference. Okay, and this is now 4K 60 FPS. Things should be a lot more smoother and I actually kind of prefer the way this 4K 60 FPS looks from the front facing camera. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, there might be a switch in the way audio is being captured because this, as far as I know, doesn't have AI audio uh, enabled. So that might be something for you to keep in mind if you wanna film at 4K 60 FPS using the smartphone. But yeah, this is a sample from the front facing camera. Now let's move on to some rear facing samples. Let's start off with some 4K 30fps video. This is from the ultra wide angle lens and the reason I'm filming in landscape here is because I did read the comments in my previous video 
and everyone was saying that the video samples should be in landscape so here they are this is me just having a stroll across a very nice part of dubai what i'm gonna do is move in and go to 1x this is now 1x uh, zoom and you can see that it's doing a pretty decent job of capturing details as well as colors not sure how it can handle dynamic range so what i can do is aim at the sun and it seems like it's doing fine to be honest so i'm not too um, disappointed by this quality let's now zoom into 2x onto this boat uh, and throughout this i am walking so you'll also be able to judge stability and stabilization of the camera setup as well and what i can do is move all the way up to 5x now this is a look at 5x and if you saw the color change from 2x to 5x is a bit rapid so that is something to keep in mind for sure and if we try and pan into this this is sort of the level of detail that you may be able to get with this camera what i'm going to do is move all the way to 10x so this is now 10x and uh, the stability definitely takes a hit here but i guess it's still usable so let's now move on to 4k 60 fps okay so what you'll notice with 4k 60 fps is much smoother video that is number one but also maybe slightly less stability in your videos and to be honest i feel like there is a difference in the way color is being captured as well so again this i'm starting off with the wide angle lens of so 0.6 and what i'm gonna do is now zoom in to 1x so I'm not sure if the change in the lens has been captured quite dramatically. I would hope that it isn't, but this is a look at 4K 60 FPS panning now at 1x quality. And what I'm gonna do is also kind of move towards where the sun is setting. Uh, it should come up just on the left here. So this will give you a good idea of how much this thing is capable of when it comes to dynamic range. Uh, let's move on to 2x now. This is a look at 2x. I kind of find it enjoyable to film at 4k 60 fps But I feel like the result that I'm gonna get out of it, especially when it comes to stabilization Might not be great because if you looked at the previous video sample, you'd see that it's a bit more stable This is now 5x. So once again pretty similar in terms of stability as well as results and finally let's move all the way to 10x and this is sort of the quality that you can get definitely not as stable as 4k 30 fps and also losing a bit of focus but yeah that is 4k 60. finally if you really want to you can go to 8k 24 fps this is the maximum resolution on this thing now one caveat here is that you cannot cycle through all the lenses what you can do is cycle through just to zoom ranges i think pertaining to this lens alone so this is 8k 24 fps i don't feel like i would be using this too often but if you happen to like this well it is an option for you what i can do is move in here and go all the way 2x this is now 2x zoom at 8k 24 fps fairly detailed if you ask me but whether or not it is usable given the frame rate and how it pans i'm not quite sure and now finally we can zoom all the way to 3x this is now a look at 3x using the same 8k 24 fps i feel like this sort of a mode could be useful for when you have a very very stable setup and you just want to capture some movement so let's say for example if i was to just stop on this and just capture this maybe this would be something that is kind of a neat feature given the detail but that aside i don't find this too useful we'll do the same for nighttime performance starting with zoom once again at 1x where the night mode kicks in automatically and i'm actually impressed this is at 2x and this is at 5x where some drops in quality and noise starts to creep in 10x suffers a bit from noise further and a softer look comes about in the picture but it's not bad by any means and now we move on to 30x which is impressive given it's a nighttime photo followed by 60x and finally 120x which seems just like a novelty and not really useful in any conditions that i've tested 
Testing the wide to the ultra wide transition, we go from this to this. Notice how a lot of detail is lost and the overall image becomes a bit muddled and soft, but that's in challenging conditions like we saw before, because here the camera is not too bad transitioning from the lenses, so it really depends on what you're capturing and where you are. I'd say portraits in low light though definitely struggle with the 1x lens, but with 2x, it's decent if you ask me. Lastly, there's selfies again, which are nothing too spectacular, but do a good job including portrait mode, which is good. So this is a look at front-facing video camera footage from the Xiaomi 15S Pro. And as you can see, this is a challenging environment and I'm recording this at 4K 30fps, even though the maximum resolution on this thing is 4K 60fps. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. The reason is because at 4K 30fps, this allows you to use AI audio, which is an enhancement feature that I think would make the audio from videos sound better. But you'll be the judge of that. Let me know what you think about that. And let me know what you think about the quality of the video itself. I am going to show you a 4K 60 FPS sample. So let's move on to that next. Right. And this is now 4K 60 FPS where you can kind of expect a drop off in quality, although the 4K 30 FPS itself is not too spectacular, but I'm throwing this in for you guys to judge whether or not there is a difference between AI audio on and off. So with that being said, now let's move on to some rear facing samples. So this is now a look at 4K 30 FPS video from the rear facing camera of the Xiaomi 15S Pro. This is at its ultra wide uh, lens and it is pretty decent. I wouldn't say it's too detailed, but at the same time, it does give you an overall idea as to how this camera performs. Now, what we're gonna do is move on to 1X. And with 1X, you can see that the details that were blown out on the ultra wide are starting to now come back into focus. So that, of course, is the difference between the ultra wide and the regular lens. But the regular lens, I would say, is not too shabby at all. We're gonna move all the way now to 2x. This is now the preset 2x video resolution. And something I've got to say is that the stability that this camera shows, especially when you're zoomed in, is actually really, really good. So 2x as well, pretty stable, uh, at least from the viewfinder that I can see. And we can zoom in all the way now to 5x. This is now 5x and especially towards the lit areas of where this is zooming in, you can see there is some emergence of noise. So that is something that you'll have to deal with. I don't know how often you would film at 5x. At the same time, you know, panning is a bit choppy and a bit AI induced. But of course, that is obviously going to happen. There is a preset that can go all the way up to 10x. So if you really want to film at 10x, you do have this option. And more so, can we go further than that? This is the maximum you can do at 15x. So yeah, that is a look at 4K 30 FPS. Let's now move to 4K 60 FPS. All right, so this is now 4K 60 FPS video. And as you can see, the drop off in quality is quite a lot. And I'm moving down a flight of steps, so it might be slightly shaky, but now I'm walking back to normal. And you can see with 60 FPS, the quality has definitely seen a noticeable drop, especially in the ultra wide lens. What I'm gonna do now is move over to the 1X lens. And if we move to the 1X lens, you can see that the clarity has now come back. So the ultra wide, especially when filming at 4K 60 FPS, might not be the way to go. Let's now zoom in a bit more and go to 2x. And this is something that is pretty cool. You can zoom in to the same extent as you can at the 4K 30 FPS resolution and not sacrifice any sort of zoom features. But at the same time, I feel like with this 4K 60 FPS zoom, you're losing out on that AI driven stability, which was there in the previous clip, if you would have seen. Now, I'm gonna move in further at 5X. This is now 5X and you do get that stability, but I don't think it is of the same level that you would find when filming at 4K 30 FPS. Finally, we're gonna zoom in all the way at 10X. This is now at 10X where the noise levels compared to what they were with 4K 30 FPS are quite a lot. And let's see what the maximum here is. It is 15 as well. This is the maximum at 15x. Now, if you really want, you can use 8K 24 FPS as a 
preset or a resolution to film your video. What this does is give you really high quality, but I don't think there's any zoomability or any movement to your clips whatsoever. I thought I'd show you this feature because it is there on the smartphone, but beyond 1x, I don't think you can use any of the lenses. You can, however, zoom in using the same lens. So I'm going to zoom in now at 2x and effectively what this does is it's going to zoom in using the same lens which might cause a loss or a drop in quality and also make things a bit shakier than usual but yeah because the resolution is so high the intended effect would be you wouldn't be losing too much detail if at all there is an option to go all the way up to 3x as well so this is now 3x zoom uh, using the 8k 24 fps resolution I'm not sure about this, I don't think I would use it too often, but let me know your thoughts and whether you would use it at all. And I think with that, we can wrap up this video. I haven't had much time to test the battery on this thing because I've literally had just a day or two with the device, so not enough time to judge it, but it's a 6,100 milliamp hour cell with 90 watt wire charging and 50 watt wireless charging support. And for the time I've used it, battery life has been awesome and I've had no complaints. So I think that's sort of a similar story that I can paint. And I can confidently say that you could get anywhere between one to 1.5 days of modern use on this thing without any issues whatsoever. But something that's an unknown for pretty much everyone including me is the fact of how the chipset will hold up over time which could be good or bad because we don't have any indication of it so far because the smartphone is so new. But those were my thoughts on the Xiaomi 15s Pro. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more to come. This was Vabov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!